Hello, welcome back to A Taste of Honey, Sweet Devotions for the Soul. I'll be reading from this uh, today and uh, day seven from the Godly, Par Godly Connections part two. And this one is based on Matthew 5, 14, which says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. In day six, ooh, you hear that noise behind us? <laughs> I'm in a new location, in case you didn't notice, and the harbor behind me and is in Oceanside. Um, I come down here quite a bit with my husband, and we do vacationing down here. So I thought it'd be fun to do um, another video from down at this location. And you know, wherever we travel, we like to try to be let God be a light through us, and. Um, and you never know how he might use us in that way. It might be a small thing. Just yesterday, we went out for dinner for the evening. And uh, as usual, it's nothing uncommon for us. We said a quiet little prayer of thanksgiving for our meal. We said grace before we ate. And we didn't know anyone was watching, but apparently someone was. And as we were finishing up, and I went to the restroom to wash my hands before leaving, the wait one of the waitresses who had taken us our food and taken us to the table. She, uh, she opened up a conversation with me and she said, I noticed you and your husband were praying before the meal. I think that's really neat. And so it started a conversation and I was able to talk to her just very briefly. It wasn't a, a preaching, it wasn't a long conversation, but hopefully it, um, it was a connection that maybe would lead her further in her walk. It didn't sound like she, um, she knew much about God's word but I hope that she will, you know, be blessed uh, just by that. And it would be an encouragement to her to continue to seek God even further in her life and in her journey. So that's what this is about today, isn't it? Uh, being a light. Uh, and, and we're kind of up on a hill too <laughs> here uh, where this um, facility is. So we're looking out over uh, a town called Oceanside. Okay, so starting in, in day six, Part, of one, part one of Godly Connections, we saw how people can be used to lead us to God's salvation. This verse in Matthew chapter 5 applies if you have accepted Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Remember, as, as a believer, you have many opportunities to bring God's light to others in everyday places. Something as simple as a joyous smile may be the brightest way you can be a light to others. An old children's song expresses that idea well with this little light of mine. A lot of you may be familiar with that song. I'll just sing a little portion of it. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. I won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bush. Oh no! I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bush. Oh no! I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. And it goes on from there. <laughs> so if you remember that song, or maybe you don't, that is a good song that, that talks about letting the light of God's love shine through us, no matter where we are. And that's what we're talking about today. And who knows, um, if you're letting God's light shine through you, uh, not necessarily singing a song, but actually doing it, who knows, maybe you might even minister to another young woman who's hurting a lot like Elise is in the story. You know, there are times we all miss such opportunities, but imagine how many thousands of more times God can use his salt and light in you to minister to others from here on out. And today I pray that God will open your eyes to such an opportunity. You know, speaking of that, um, he did, uh, opened my eyes to an opportunity, I suppose, um, uh, not too long ago when we were down in the same town of Oceanside and we'd gone to a movie that night, uh, one night, and um, 
you know, I was in the ladies' room, <laughs> the, uh, the restroom, uh, after the movie was over. And one thing led to another, and so it was two little children in there with their mom, and one of them needed a little help with something, and I helped her. And that led to a conversation with her mother and the two little girls. And before you know it, we just started connecting. And um, so exchanged information, and we've become good friends. So you never know what might happen. And as a believer, I've studied God's Word since my youth. And I know that it's my responsibility to share God's love and salvation with others as he gives me opportunity. And I guess the narrator of the buzz at Chicky Pie's Cafe might phrase it this way. They might say, after we gather the nectar of God's word in our hearts, we ought to share it with others and let the good Lord turn it into his sweet honey. You know, in part one of Godly Connections, the devotion we looked at, if you remember back to the first one, some of the people who planted seeds of faith in Elisa's heart were friends that helped her before and during her escape. And let's look at some of those. Um, remember Reuben and Betty, besides those two, who were key people who played a part in, in Elisa's spiritual honey uh, journey. Um, who were some other key people at, besides uh, Reuben and Betty who played a key role? Who might you remember? Now, if you've read through the book a little further, I hope by now, you'll see that uh, someone named Mel comes into her life and then somebody else later on named Billy. So uh, those two other people um, also become very key in leading at least even deeper into a walk of faith, don't they? And there's a few others as well, but those are the two other key people. Oh, and her husband, Pete. <laughs> so I'll, I, I just gave you the answer to those. <laughs> and then the next question in, in your devotional study, it says, in light of these influential relationships, how important were they in the story of Elisa's redemption. Do you think they were very important? Sort of important? What do you think? That's for you to fill in. And the last question here on page 16 says, would you say that Mel was someone who planted or someone who watered the seeds of faith in Elisa's heart? Did she plant those seeds initially? Or was she one that watered those seeds? I'm going to let you answer that yourself too. I think you'll figure that out pretty easily as you read the story. But I hope that uh, it gave you just a little taste of honey to sweeten your day and help you start thinking about um, the rest of your day today, especially if you've started it early uh, to watch this devotion or to read the devotion. And if not for today, at least for tomorrow, and the day after. Because each day, when we allow God to be, uh, open our eyes and to use us, He can. I had another one today, the very day, because of something that, eh, not so pleasant that started off as an annoyance. Just two days ago, our refrigerator freezer went out on us. All the food was starting to thaw out. and. The, the freezer defrosted, the refrigerator just totally stopped. And so we had to call a repairman and he was able to come out and then he was able to come out again today to replace the parts that needed replacing and to fix it. And he did a good job. He was a nice young man, very efficient and reliable, we could tell. But I wondered why that happened. You see, do you do that? Do you wonder why little annoyance, things like that can happen? Well, it may be just that's all that's going to be. But sometimes God allows those as opportunities. And as he finished up today, and we started a little conversation, I happened to mention to him something odd that happened to me re related to this event of the refrigerator breaking down. Because it's just happened that two weeks prior to the refrigerator breaking down, I had a dream about a refrigerator going out. <laughs> and 
I never uh, thought at all that it was prophetic when I had it, but it did seem odd and it did seem to press on my heart for several days afterwards. So I began to wonder if maybe God was telling me something profound through the dream. And anyway, I, the interesting thing about the dream I had was in that dream, I was sitting on the floor trying to clear, I, we had cleared out all the stuff in the freezer of the refrigerator. And now I was putting stuff back in because it was ready to go again. And, but what was odd about that dream, besides the fact that I kept thinking about it, that refrigerator was very different from my refrigerator at home. It had a big drawer, box-like drawer at the base where all the freezer was, a freezer part compartment. And our refrigerator isn't like that at all. It's not designed that way at all. It has a side freezer that goes up, you know, this full length and height. So I never even thought about it, but when our freezer refrigerator went out here in Oceanside, that's exactly how it's designed. <laughs> and so it was like, wow, it was like God was telling me a couple weeks ago that our refrigerator, refreezer, was going to go on the, you know, come on, go, go, go out. And it did. So I thought, why would God want me to know that? You know, that's, that's an annoying thing, but why would God give me a dream about that? If that's indeed what he was doing, and it seems to be. <laughs> and so I thought, I've got to pray about this. So this morning, and a little bit yesterday, when he first came, I prayed and I said, God, to see what, uh, what you want me to do, what you want me to say. Is there anything we're supposed to say or do while this man is here, this in our refrigerator? Or is there some other reason this refrigerator, this appliance went, you know, conked out. And um, it wasn't until the second trip out here and he finished up and a conversation started as he was telling me uh, what to do afterwards and so forth. And I found out that he not only fixed refrigerators, he wanted to be a movie producer. And he's already got some, some things, some projects lined up, some, um, someone writing scripts that he has ideas for and he's doing some filming so i don't know but we'll see what happens and how god might connect me in that way perhaps with the buzz at chicky pies cafe because i've had a few people tell me it would make a great movie and i kind of think they're right <laughs> so see what you think if you haven't uh, gotten to that point at, or as you're reading it tell me what you think would it make would the Buzz of Chicky Pies Cafe make a good movie? And why do you think so? You can send me a text or, well, an email would be the best, or make a comment on my, um, my YouTube channel, or you could send it to a comment on my blog at iris, iriskerrigan.com, www.iriskerrigan.com, and you should know how to spell it because it's on my YouTube channel. Just no space is all little, small lowercase. Anyway, um, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed another taste of honey in my sweet devotions for the soul. And if you haven't gotten this yet, be sure to get it. It's easy. Just subscribe on my website, iriskerrigan.com, and fill in the box there. And you should start getting my newsletters, and there'll be links there as well, so you can get your free devotions for the soul that's 12 devotions for the soul uh, and i hope that you will enjoy it and take advantage of every opportunity god gives you to be a light for him and that's it for today bye bye and come back i hope to see you again soon